Phil Tippett's Mad God is a film that must be seen to be believed. Born from 30 years of strained production, it presents handcrafted, horrifying visions of misery. Reactions to the film reveal one thing. Mad God cannot be denied. I was knocked out by how powerful and how awful the imagery is. It's the closest thing that I've ever seen to an actual nightmare in texture, pacing, everything. Mad God is about the darkest thing I've ever seen, emotional in almost exclusively negative ways, just the most evocative depictions of hatred and misery. Beyond visual prowess, however, Mad God is enigmatic. The film lacks dialogue, there is little narrative continuity, and 25 minutes into the film, its main character... Instead, what Mad God offers is... So, if not a narrative, what is Mad God attempting to communicate? And how can we attempt to understand it? Physical pain creates an absolute split between one sense of one's own reality and the reality of other persons. In The Body in Pain, Elaine Scarry charts out the many complications and contradictions that characterize physical pain. Most pressing, pain cannot be articulated. Physical pain does not simply resist language, but actively destroys it bringing about an immediate reversion to a state anterior to language, to sounds and cries a human being makes before language is learned. When in pain, we cannot articulate through language, but rather... And because we cannot articulate our pain, we similarly cannot truly comprehend the pain of others. The reason that pain cannot be verbalized, according to Skari, is that pain lacks an object. Physical pain, unlike any other state of consciousness, has no referential content. It is not of or for anything. It is precisely because it takes no object that it, more than any other phenomenon, resists objectification in language. We are angry at someone, hungry for something, in love with someone. But when we are in pain, pain is all that there is. This paradox between the undeniability of pain and the inexpressibility of pain was Skari's primary concern. Pain comes unshareably into our midst as at once that which cannot be denied and that which cannot be confirmed. So we have two problems. Pain cannot be expressed and Mad God cannot be understood. One potential direction, what would it look like to express pain not through verbal language, but cinematic language? As Skari claims, attempting a true articulation of pain with words is impossible. The realm of time, images, and sound, however, may prove fruitful. Perhaps Mad God is attempting not to tell a story, but to articulate an experience that is otherwise inarticulable. Suddenly, Mad God's lack of narrative becomes relevant. This is the cinematic equivalent of Payne's lack of a subject-object relationship. It is easy to make a story from other feelings. When we hunger for something or are angry at someone, conflict flows naturally. And from conflict, narrative. In Payne, with no interaction between a subject and object to speak of, there can be no conflict, and with no conflict, there can be no narrative. The lack of protagonist follows a similar logic. Narratives happen to or for a character, 
placing them as the objects of the film. Thus, if Mad God is to truly articulate pain, then it must have no character for the same reason it cannot have a narrative. There may be no subject, and there may be no object. There may be only pain. The lack of these cinematic conventions in Mad God is at first glance unsatisfying. However, it is this lack of apparent meaning that contributes to an understanding of Mad God as an attempt to articulate pain beyond language. Pain wipes you free of knowledge, makes understanding utterly redundant. There's nothing to know or understand. Subjects, objects, fail. All you are is all that is, and all of it hurts. Mad God is meaningless because pain is meaningless. The film asks its viewer to witness evil not in order to understand it, but to affirm its inexplicable reality. But why? What is gained when pain is articulated? To witness the moment when pain causes a reversion to the pre-language of cries and groans is to witness the destruction of language. But conversely, to be present when a person moves up out of that pre-language and projects the facts of sentience into speech is almost to have been permitted to be present at the birth of language itself. While Mad God is, on one level, just as meaningless as the pain it expresses, it is in the fact that the film attempts to articulate pain at all that makes it meaningful. By utilizing the visual language of cinema where verbal language fails, Mad God is able to illuminate something elusive, primordial. As Skari emphasizes, pain that is articulated has become useful. Meaning has been restored to it. That which was once intangible, indescribable, and incommunicable becomes contained, understandable, and observable once articulated. Mad God, then, is an example of the potentials of film to communicate sensations which are otherwise inaccessible to the exterior world. And this communication, Skari says, is meaning-making in its most primal form, the basis of all meaningful human connection. Expressing pain is the way other persons become visible to us, or cease to be visible to us. It is the way we make ourselves, and the originally interior facts of sentience, available to one another. <laughs>